Welcome back to Upfront. Assembly Minority Leader Peter Barker of Kenosha is stepping down from his leadership role later this month. His announcement late last week followed some dissension within the Democratic ranks. What happens next for Assembly Democrats? We're asking our J.R. Ross from our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com. He's at our Madison affiliate, WKOW TV. J.R., good to have you back on the program. And first of all, let's, let's get the backstory on Peter Barker's decision to step down from his leadership role. What happened there? Well, this decision that wasn't made on his own is a decision made under duress with issues been percolating in his caucus for several sessions, to be honest with you. I mean, if you go back to 2011 when he took over, to now, they have not climbed out of the minority at all, made progress on that. They're still the lowest point they've been since the 1950s number-wise. So there's been that issue. And he survived challenges in 14 and rumblings in 16, but the final straw was his Foxconn uh, bill that was before the assembly and passed with support of Peter Barca. Now, some people are making the connection of, oh, Barca voted for the bill, therefore that's why he's being pushed out. It's not really that simple. There's a nuance there where you had the leader of a caucus that was unhappy about this bill because they see it as corporate welfare. They see it as a risky investment for Wisconsin that will take dollars away from schools and other priorities down the road. So not only was Peter supporting it, but he worked with Republicans on the bill ahead of time. He then praised it on the floor of the assembly of the debate. And then after the vote, he went out there and talked, did a news conference, which became the why Peter Barker voted for the bill, not the what's the message of so many Democrats taking a stand against a risky investment in their eyes for Wisconsin taxpayers. Uh, JR, what's the challenge for, for the next leadership? Obviously, we have a change in leadership. What's the challenge ahead? Well, message has been a big thing for some of the Democrats. They've had kind of some issues with that. They've had issues with fundraising. They need to get somebody who creates buy-in from this caucus. Now, some of the Democrats face an issue. They have a map in place that makes it difficult for them to ever win back the majority. But to get out of the hole that they're in right now, they need a consistent message. The question is, whoever replaces him, can that person be a more effective messenger, fundraiser, and leader on campaigns going forward? Before uh, we go, JR, uh, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. Senate race. So now we have on the Republican side, we have Leah Bukmir and Kevin Nicholson in the race. What is the status of Eric Hovde? Uh, when I talked to Eric Hovde, he said he's again taking time. He's been saying all along he has time to make a decision because he is somebody who can self-finance a large part of his own race. I think he put $5 million bucks in in 2012, ran for the nomination so that those resources give him a freedom to take his time about making a decision. So Hovde told me he hopes to decide the next 30 to 45 days whether he's going to get in. But if he makes that decision then, he may wait until next year to actually get into the race because unlike Leah Vukmi or Kevin Nicholson, he has that luxury of time because of his personal finances. Now, the longer he takes, though, the more doubts will creep in to insiders of, will this guy actually run for this office? Because you don't just jump in and go. You have to build a team have an operation, so that's going to be his next step. If he does get in, it's not just having the money, but the operation, the campaign team, to be effective, uh, effective can in that race. J.R. Ross is uh, with our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com. He joins us today from Madison. J.R., always great to have you on the program. Still ahead on Upfront, the greatest threat to our greatest natural asset.